Hey guys, welcome to part three of Hybrid Drums Explained. Today we're going to go through setting up triggers, all the parameters inside the module to make sure that you can get everything firing on all cylinders and not firing when you don't want them to make a sound. So first thing we want to look at is how to save parameters. In some modules this may be called trigger bank, in some modules this may just be save. I'm using the TM2 right here, so in order to do that you need to get into the setup menu. So to do that you hit shift in the instrument key. That gets you to setup. We're going to go to backup save. Enter. We're going to name it backup 2. We're going to save it into the number 2 spot. We're going to overwrite that setting right there. And am I sure? Yes. Now any changes that are made I won't. I can go ahead and uh, go back to at least where I'm at here. It's also really important if you use multiple drum sets for different reasons. For example, I have a couple different rehearsal studios I play at that have house kits, and uh, you know a couple gigs that have house kits that I've had a chance to actually dial these in. You want to dial in your triggers based on the drum because drums may be bigger, may be smaller, may be tuned tighter, may be tuned looser. Um, all those things can affect specifically trigger performance, kick drum trigger, snare drum trigger, anything that sits on a drum head, you want to make sure to dial that in. So you want to make sure to save all those settings when you're done with that so you can go back and recall it if you ever use that particular drum set again. So let's go into how to set this up. What I have set up today is I just have my KT-10 uh, set up and I have a BT-1 set up and then I have on the, uh, the ring of the uh, number one I have my just standard kick drum trigger, pretty much my standard setup we went over in the last video. So in order to change your parameters, on this module you go to setup, and trigger setup is what you're looking for. So we'll hit enter. So the first thing you're going to come across is type of input. On my first one I've got pad times two, that means I'm splitting it, I have two separate pads going to two separate places, one to the kick drum trigger and one to the KT-10 pedal. On number two, because it's a dual zone pad, it's head and rim together. That means I'm using one trigger, the head and the rim sound together. So if you're using like a PD-8, PD-120, any kind of head, rim, dual zone pad, you want head and rim. If you're using a splitter cable or just a single mono pad, like a Dawes pad or something like that, and you're only using one, then you want pad times two. So on channel number one, that's my kick triggers, I have pad times two. Next thing up is type. So let's start with the head, or sorry, the, uh, the, yeah, the head. So the head is going to be your, your tip. So in the last video we talked about the, the tip and the ring when you're splitting. So the head versus the rim on the head is the main sound that you want. If you were to lose that special cable and have to plug into um, a regular mono cable, this is the sound you must have. So what I actually need to have is the KT-10. So let's find the KT-10 on here. Now if your particular pad is not listed, this has a couple different presets. The thing is, the stuff we're going to go through right now this will absolutely work no matter what. So I could set this to any type of pad and it would work just because we're going to go through and we're going to edit everything anyway to the way that I play. Please note these numbers that I'm going to come up with today may not work for you. You've got to go through this process yourself and get the numbers that do work for you. So the first thing up is sensitivity. Depending on the uh, brand of your module this may be called gain but this is basically how much gain the signal gets from the trigger or the pad into the module so to set this what you want to do is you want to hit your trigger as hard as you're absolutely going to like your hardest hit ever and what we're looking for is number 127 to come up here if it comes up 127 when I'm barely hitting it that means my sensitivity is too high so I need to go ahead and back that down a couple. If I back it down too far, and no matter how hard I hit it, I can only get to 114, I need to take that up. Let's try four. Let's 
So it looks like 4 is where I want it to be. You only want that 127 number to be your absolute hardest. I'm using my kick trigger right now, just burying that beater in there as hard as I can. That's 127. That's the number you're looking for. Next up, we have threshold. This is the opposite. This is your lightest, <clears throat> excuse me, absolute lightest hit. So when I hit it, I want to see that light come up. I can hit it and it's not coming up. So let's go down a little bit until it does. Now, be realistic with yourself. Am I ever going to tap this pedal this light? Yes or no. If I am, then yes, you want to lower that threshold. So like my snare trigger, I think it's set to one because I want to hit real light ghost notes. On my kick trigger, I actually keep this up a little bit because I'm never going to hit it that low. The reason that's important is if you set this really far down and I stomp on the floor next to it, I'm not actually hitting the pedal. I'm just stomping on the floor and sometimes it's triggering... So if your threshold is set too low, the slightest little jar of your pad, or your pedal, like if your pad is mounted on a drum and you hit the drum and the pad is sounding, then you need to bring your threshold up. All right, so let's bring that up to about 14, 15, and let's try it there. Keep bringing it up. All right, looks like 17 gets me right where I want to go. And I'm actually going to take it down one more to 16, just to be sure. Um, I don't really have any issues with this firing, um, so I should be good. Next up is curve. I prefer linear curve, but there's a couple different curves in here. You've got exponential, which basically means it starts at zero and just exponentially gets louder. So it's going to hit that 127 number way sooner it's going to output it so I don't have to hit my hardest number and it's going to focus on the upper range so if you're playing and you just need more you just need to um, like a wall of sound out of that particular trigger then you want to go exponential it even has exponential too which is even more it's real easy to get that 127 on there next up is logarithmic logarithmic <clears throat> log one and log two, that's kind of the opposite. It's really going to focus on that bottom end and give you a lot of bottom end sensitivity and then until you hit it. So that's, um, some people like that if they know they're going to have a loud sound and a quiet sound, they keep it logarithmic so they know it's loud, 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 you know, quiet, 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 ghost note, ghost note, ghost note, accents. And all your accents are really, really jumping up 50, 60, uh, at a time. Logarithmic 2 is different. Loud 1 is basically just loud all the time. And loud 2 is just louder all the time. Again, I prefer linear. The great thing about most modules is this setting can be changed inside the patch. So say for example I have a patch that I just always want to be the same volume, I can set that. Or I always want it to be mostly loud or really quiet or really loud. I can set this setting in the patch. So I really like to keep it linear because most of my uh, most of my sounds I want a linear sound. I want it to respond in a normal way. Retrig cancel. So this is really important if you're hitting the pedal and it's sounding more than once you want to come to retrig cancel and crosstalk cancel are the other ones that we're going to talk about. All right, retrig cancel. Mask time is another one. This doesn't have a mask time. Some have a mask time. We'll talk about that just a little bit. So what retrig cancel does is if there are two hits with a second one quieter within a very short period, it will cancel the second hit. It'll just not send it to the brain. It will not sound any notes. So if you find you hit it and it goes da doom, da doom, da doom, then you need to bring that retrig cancel up. You want to keep this as low as possible, though, because the higher this is, especially on uh, snare pads, if you play really, really fast double bass with a single trigger, you can actually outplay your retrig cancel time, and it can cause you to start skipping notes because it's doing that. Mask time is very similar to retrig cancel, whereas retrig cancel specifically looks for a second note that's quieter. Mask time means you're going to wait a specific amount of time, usually in tenths of milliseconds, before it listens for another note. 
that's really nice to have on like floor toms or kick drums that are unmuffled because the waves are still there they're still kind of flopping when you hit them so it can actually hit the trigger twice and make it think that you played two notes so mask time is better to use rather than retrig cancel on bigger drums when you're talking about triggers if you're talking about pads keep that mask time really low and go to retrig cancel all right next up is crosstalk cancel so let's say if i hit my kick drum and my hi-hat sound on my snare is sounding then that's where you bring this up usually about 30 percent to 40 percent is good what that means is if you hit two and you're just a little off you're going to be okay if you're dead on it's only going to sound one but uh, we're talking within milliseconds of each other so i usually keep that set about 40 percent and i have no problems whatsoever with crosstalk between my triggers or my pads so let's go ahead and set up the, uh, the BT-1. All right, so this is number two. This is this one here. So this is a head and rim. Okay. Type is BT-1. That's really, really important because, again, rolling modules, it's sending that test signal or... Uh, this pad, it's sending that test signal out on that uh, ring sound, that second sound. So this pad is really cool. So you can hit it on the side. You can hit the drum right next to it. And unless you're striking dead on the pad, it doesn't sound. All right. Next up, sensitivity. We're going to do this exactly the same way. You're going to smack it as hard as you're going to realistically play and you're going to bring that sensitivity down till you're just hitting 127 looks like right there let's try seven let's keep it up at eight all right threshold on the BT-1 specifically can be zero because it's um, it's masking that in other ways so that can be zero curve again I like that set to linear retrig cancel not really an issue but I do have it set to one because again it's using a different method to uh, cancel retrigger if this was a true dual zone pad and that it had a head and a rim, rim gain and head rim adjust would basically mean if I hit the rim and it was too quiet or too loud, you could adjust the gain on the rim. And head rim adjust is I hit the head, but I hit it kind of close to the edge and the rim sounds. That's what head rim adjust means. You use that to adjust how sensitive the rim sound is versus the head sound. So you can actually make it because sometimes you get a pad and you hit it right at the edge of the, uh, the head and the rim will sound. So that's what you use head rim adjust for. Noise cancel, I don't have any issue, so I always turn that off. And crosstalk cancel, I have this one set to about 20. It's fine, that's what comes default. And again, I've never had any issues with the BT-1 crosstalking with anything. So there you have it. That is how you set up all of your sounds. Once you go through one, go through all of them, and just play, play, play these electronic drums and listen to each individual sound. If you hear one starting to double trigger, that's when you start wanting to look into that retrig cancel or maybe mask time if it's a trigger on a bigger drum. If you find that it's just not as expressive enough, like every time you hit it, it's just too loud, maybe try turning that sensitivity down or that gain down just a little bit. If you find that you hit it and it's just not sounding, go for that threshold, bring that down a little bit. Or if you find that maybe it's just sounding too much, like I hit the drum next to it and it's sounding, maybe bring that threshold up a little bit. Um, sometimes it takes some experimentation because it really depends on what triggers you're using, where they're placed, and if they're getting any sympathetic vibrations from other drums. If you guys have any questions about how to set your drums up or how to set your triggers up, please ask them in the comments. Let me know. I will get back with you. 
Thank you very much and you have a wonderful day.